Hello, everybody. Welcome to the better side of the mountain in the Ramsey Center in Cullowee, North Carolina, for the Catamount All Access pregame show presented by TV62. I'm Caleb Rutherford alongside Jake Myers, and today we have your Western Carolina Catamounts hosting the Eagles of Georgia Southern. Jake, Western just came off a loss, a heartbreaking loss to Davidson, 79 74, and at one point they were down 17 points in the first half. Talk to us a little bit about the resiliency of this team and how they can use that, even though they lost, how they can use that resiliency going forward. Well, we've seen it all year long. I mean, resiliency is in this team throughout the entire game. Coach Larry Hunter never gives up, and we saw this in the SoCon Championship game last year against Davidson when they were down by about the same margin and came back to make it close, double overtime. We all know about that game. And they, they have a lot of fight in them. They never give up, and it gives other teams they can't rest against them. The Catamounts are always on the attack, and hey, it's really good to see this team put fight in them because they need to do that from time to time to show that they are worthy of being in this conference against the best teams. And you know, Nick Cochran for the Wildcats of Davidson had a monster game, 32 points. He was scoring from wherever he wanted to shoot the ball. He could have shot it from the other three-point line and it would have gone in. Certainly something that you probably won't see again if these two teams play each other in the conference playoffs here come up in a few months. Now, so far here for Western, it has been the Trey Sumler show, and rightfully so. He is an excellent player, one that plays pretty much the whole game, plays both good on both offense and defense. Other guys have stepped up at times, such as Brandon Boggs, Tom Tankowitz, and Tawaski King, but none have really consistently stepped up. Who needs to be more consistent for the Catamounts as they come down the stretch here in conference play? Well, I'm going to give you a couple guys. First, Brandon Boggs. We saw him against Davidson, even though he fouled out later in the second half. He had about 22 points. He had 22 points on 9 of 13 shooting. Talk about an efficient night for Brandon Boggs. He was fired up throughout that entire game. Very disappointed when he fouled out. But when he gets going and he gets hot, it's really hard to stop him because his game is multi-dimensional. Also, I look to see James Sinclair, the, guy, the outstanding freshman we saw a year ago, developed this year, has been put into the starting lineup. Larry Hunter trusts him. He's, he's shown glimpses, and he's shown a lot of times that he can get into the paint, he can do what he wants, he can shoot at will. He's a very good shoot, shooter, we know that, but he's not very consistent. they got to get him the ball, get him going, and hopefully him and Boggs can help Trey out. And certainly, you know, I would like to see some, some more out of Sinclair as well. And it looks like he will be starting. It looks like they're going with the same lineup they went against with Davidson. Certainly something that has worked for them in the past. And now over a period of seven days, let's go over to talk about Georgia Southern for a moment. Over a period of seven days, Georgia Southern played four games. And that included their two conference wins. They're two and five this year against Davidson and College of Charleston, two of the best teams in this whole conference. And then they also lost to, I believe it was, App State and the Citadel, you know, those were teams they should have beaten. So when you have a stretch like that where you beat two of the best teams in the conference and then you lose to two of the teams that haven't been quite as good in the conference, what does that do for your confidence? Does it hurt you or do you try to ignore the two losses or how does that, how does that affect the team? Well, you can't really ignore the two losses because they still are losses, but it goes to show that, hey, we can hang with these guys. We can hang with the guys that we need to beat in this conference because, as you know, Charleston and Davidson are in the North Division just like Georgia Southern is. And Georgia Southern, the fact that they beat those two teams, even though they lost to the lower-seeded teams, it shows that, hey, we can hang with these guys. And come tournament time, we all know anything can happen. And Georgia Southern, they're really looking to make a push in this conference. Now, we've talked about this a lot. I want to go back and talk about the Catamounts and their experience early on in the season, traveling to Illinois, traveling to Georgetown, and playing a surprisingly good team in Wichita State in the Puerto Rico Classic they had down there, which I'm sure was a very fun trip. You know, they were all losses, but talk to us for a minute about how, even though they were losses, you can build off of games like that, especially the Illinois game where they, they had a legitimate chance to win until right at the very end when Illinois got hot. Talk about that for a second. Well, as you mentioned, the Illinois game, that was a fantastic game. Western was in it throughout the entire time. It was, it was down in Illinois, first of all, and that's just even more amazing to see that the Catamounts had enough fight in them even though they're not even on their home floor. I, I don't even know if they've half of them even been to Illinois. But the fact that they could do that, only lost by a couple, actually probably lost about six or seven mm -hmm. because down from uh, for three free throws. But hey, it goes to show that this team, when they, when they can get going and when they can come together and be united, they can really test any single team. And we know that 
going in, they're not going to be the best team on the floor almost any night because they're, they have weaknesses everywhere. So does every other team. But they're not going to outman you. They're not going to outgun you. Western is just going to stick around and be resilient like you talked about. I don't know what Le Coach Larry Hunter does. I don't know what he says. I don't know what the players do. But at the same time, it's whatever it is, it works. And they get it going, and they keep it up the entire game. Well, as a former athlete, I can tell you that sometimes it's a little bit easier to get yourself up, so to speak, for a, a game that you probably have no business winning. And a lot of times you'll do things you wouldn't normally do, like play way over your head. You know, the Illinois game is a perfect example of that. They went to a very hostile environment against a very good team. They played excellent defense for most of the game. And then right at the end, Illinois got a couple threes in a row that really broke the spirit of the team, I think. But really, I mean, that's a testament to Coach Hunter. He's done a very good job coaching this team. He has them ready to play against everybody. I mean, and a perfect example of that's the Davidson game. I believe that Davidson is, you know, they have a lot more talent than we do. Maybe not as much as one might think, but Davidson's been good for years and years and years. And they were down 20, or not 27, excuse me, 17 points, which is, that's a lot of points, especially in college. And, you know, they went into halftime, and Coach Hunter, I don't know what he told them, but they came out, and I tell you, they had a real chance to win that game. And we're talking about schedules. You know, Georgia Southern has had a, very, a few key wins of their own. They beat Virginia Tech at Virginia Tech, and that's, that's a big win for them. They also beat, as we said, Davidson and College of Charleston back-to-back -back games, which is, which is very impressive. And then they went and lost to the Citadel, who's, who's really been struggling in this conference. And then they lost to Appalachian State, who's kind of had a – uh, the tale of two halves for their season. They started off really poorly, but they've been playing very well lately. All right, now quickly, let's go over your keys to the game. What are your keys to the game for the Catamounts tonight? Well, I, I, like to, I like to see somebody else get going besides Trey Sumler. We talked about Boggs. We talked about Sinclair. Hey, maybe even Tawaski King in the inside can get something going because someone has to step up besides Trey because we know how he likes to take the ball into his hands late games to try to get this team going. But he can't be doing everything because then Georgia Southern has an advantage on the defensive end. I also look for them to hit the boards and hit them hard because we saw against Davidson, they weren't really doing very good on the defensive glass. Davidson was getting a lot of offensive rebounds, a lot of second chance points, which made them extend the lead. Even though the Catamounts got back into it, it was too much of a lead to handle. So if they can do that, I look for them to make it tough for Georgia Southern to get into this game and to get a win out. I think so long as Trey Sumler has an efficient night that the Catamounts will win this game. He's one, Trey is one of those that he's dangerous from inside or outside. He's certainly willing to drive inside, even though he's not the biggest guy on the court. In fact, he might be the smallest guy on the court. But he needs to make sure to occasionally look outside. I, I see the way they run their offense. That Tom Tankowitz, who's a very good three-point shooter, usually sits on the outside of the arc and usually just kind of chills out there. And he usually gets open. If Trey can just find him or Brandon Boggs or James Sinclair, who are all capable of making a three-point shot, if he'll just pass it out to them occasionally, get them some open looks, even if they don't make it, I think they've got a real chance to win this game because I think that Tawaski King is a very good inside player and can hang with anybody that Georgia Southern has. And that'll do it for the Catamount All Access pregame show presented by TV62. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, Kyle Rush and Phil Jackson will have the call of the action. You've been watching the Catamount All Access pregame show presented by TV62. Thanks for watching.
Cowboys of Western Carolina University for this afternoon's Southern Conference Men's College Basketball Game featuring the visiting Georgia Southern University Eagles and your Western Carolina University Catamounts. Now let's meet the starting lineups for today's game. First for the visiting Eagles, starting at one guard, a 6'5 freshman from Miami of Florida, number zero, Cleon Roberts. And another guard, a 6'3 senior from Daytona Beach, Florida, number 24, C.J. Reed. And a forward, a 6'7 junior from Statesboro, Georgia, number three, Eric Ferguson. And another forward, a 6'7 junior from Decatur, Georgia, number two, Sam Mike. And a third forward, a 6'8 sophomore from Sulphur, South Carolina, number 34, Cameron Dunnigan. The Eagles head coach is Charlton Young, assisted by Cliff Reed, Christian Williams, and Chris Capco. And with that, we welcome you to the broadcast. I'm Kyle Rush, along with Philip Jackson. And Philip, Coach Hunter has emphasized putting Thursday night behind us. It's on to another big SoCon action against Georgia Southern here this afternoon. Absolutely, Kyle. You got to move on. You can't. You can't dwell on something that's in the past. You can't change it. Georgia Southern is just as tough as opponent as Davidson. Davidson's only conference loss was to this Georgia Southern squad. This Georgia Southern team has also beaten several good teams like Virginia Tech. They've also knocked off College of Charleston. So these guys are no strangers to the big game. So the Catamounts got to bring it today. Forget about the Davidson game. And they got a big player on the other side. Ferguson can really get it done for the Eagles on the inside. Absolutely. He's a very versatile guy. Small forward, but he's six foot seven. Can score from really on the anywhere on the court. He's going to be a matchup problem for the Catamounts defensively. And as Caleb mentioned in the pregame, it's the same starting five we had two nights ago against the Davidson Wildcats here in the Ramsey Center. 
looking to put that behind him, and Tankowitz looks to stay on the floor and be more effective than he was a game ago against the Davidson Wildcats. He's too valuable to spend his time sitting on the bench, even if he's not hitting from the outside. Just the threat of him being on the court is a hard matchup for anybody. Georgia Southern going inside early. Right-handed hook is good. And Diamond already getting that inside presence established for the Georgia Southern Golden Eagles. Sinclair comes around a summer screen. Cut off at the baseline. And Kyle, early on it's apparent that the Georgia Southern Eagles are gonna stick Eric Ferguson on Trey Summer. Trey Summer only being about 5'11", 6 feet. It's gonna be forced to match up against Ferguson who's a very tall 6'7". Roberts a spot up three. And an early 5-0 start for the Eagles. Inside goes to Tawaski. No double, he'll take it himself. Right-handed hook is good. Almost automatic when he gets it on the low block with no double team, Phillip. And Kyle, that's good to see you get the big man involved early. He kind of he kind of went away a little bit against Davidson because they went away from him at times, so getting him involved early is key. Going right at Tawaski, they'll have to kick it out. Good defense by the big fella off the dribble. Way long, Boggs the rebound, and he played a very, very fine game to back up his nice performance. Tankowitz for three, bang! Uh, and a great sign if you're a fan of the purple and gold. Yeah, he's almost made just as big of an impact already in this game than he did all of Thursday night. We're tied at five. With about 18 minutes to go, loose ball. And it'll be interesting to see if we see some of that 1-3-1 matchup zone that Catamount showed against Davidson. They were able to force lots of turnovers, which led to baskets on the offensive end. And if the Catamounts were to find themselves down early on, which hopefully it won't turn into that way, then they may have to go to it. But typically as a coach, you try to stay away from the press early on just because some of the holes it leaves in your defense. Tankowitz makes the extra pass into King. A nice dish, can't finish. Boggs can't get the follow and Georgia Southern dodges the bullet. Much more aggressive by these Catamounts than we saw Thursday night early on. Roberts made his first, can't connect this time. Somewhere ahead to Boggs, looking for a trailer. Kicks it out, Tankowitz for three more. You better believe it. Look out below, Tom the Tank is feeling it tonight. And that could be a great sign for these Catamounts anytime a shooter sees the ball go in the net early on. Usually it's early and often. And now Georgia Southern orchestrates their offense. Nice dribble. Penetration gets them the easy deuce. This may be a barn burner today, Kyle. Both teams scoring at will. It was a barn burner here a year ago. Georgia Southern hit a buzzer beater which gave them the three-point victory here at the Ramsey Center. Sumler gets the double team, turns it over. Here comes Roberts, fouled as he takes a tumble right into our cameraman, Caleb Brotherford, on the far side. And But a good foul there by Sinclair, making him go to the line to earn it. Absolutely, Kyle. Anytime you're going to foul somebody like that, make sure you don't let him get the shot. And Sinclair did a good job of fouling him hard enough to where he wasn't able to get the shot off but it wasn't an ugly foul at the same time. Just good, hard basketball right there. Roberts will go to shoot two. Georgia Southern down one. 8-7 with 16.36 to go here in the first half. First is no good. And how about the game face by Caleb Rutherford, our cameraman over there, was completely <laughs> unfazed by that at all. It's called taking one for the team. Caleb did not, was unfazed by that guy. Roberts now sets for the second. That one is good, we're tied at eight. Ferguson establishing a little bit of pressure. And Trey Summer averaging about 18 points a game, but he has proven that he can, he can burn you passing the basketball too when you draw too much attention to him scoring the basketball. Oh yeah, he's a multiple threat without a doubt, but it's obvious what Coach Young from the, from the Eagles is doing today. He's putting the larger Ferguson on Trey Summer, hoping because Everyone knows what Trey Summer can do offensively with the ball and, and scoring. So by putting the, the taller Ferguson on Summer, he's gonna make it very difficult for Summer to score. Sinclair, nice finish. Long range three. 
from downtown. Reed hits from maybe another zip code, but he thickles the twine and gives Georgia Southern the lead. Boggs now goes with the drive. Off the window is good. And Coach Hunter said it more than once. That's Boggs' game when he feels that he can drive to the basket and create his opportunities. Along with this mid-range jump shot, Kyle, those are his two, definitely his two best aspects offensively. But what I'd like to see so far early in this game is something we haven't seen at all this year, is that Brandon Boggs and Tom Tankowitz are both getting involved offensively early. Usually you get one or the other, like Thursday night, Boggs with the 20 points, Tankowitz with five. So it's good to see both those guys getting involved in the same game. Shot clock down to 10. Works with five, does Reed. He'll spot up again, fade away short this time. Tankowitz the rebound, here come the Catamounts into the front court. Boggs, that mid-range jumper you were talking about, short, won't go. But you gotta think a pretty good look if you're Coach Hunter seeing him look for his shot early. Yeah, you want him looking for him a shot. You want him to stay aggressive, especially with the performance he had Thursday night against Davidson. So it's good to see that he's maintained that aggression here. Baskerville hits the triple, his first three of the season. For Baskerville, he looked pretty pure on that one. King going back to work, right-handed hook again. Count it again. The big fella finding his shot in the lane early. And it looks like he does have the advantage size-wise. Same height, but definitely in the weight department. Tawaski King is well put together, so the Catamounts may actually have an advantage on the inside this game, which is rare. Usually they're on the, the wrong end of the they're on the wrong side of the size. Tied at 14, back and forth they go. Georgia Southern has thrived from the three-point line tonight. Going to work, double comes. They'll kick it out, swing it around. They'll try three more. Roberts this time won't get it to go. Offensive rebound. And Georgia Southern will set it back up, an area that killed the Catamounts against Davidson. Davidson, when they did miss, they were able to get a lot of second chance opportunities. Inside, can connect on the chippy, and the Catamounts dodge a bullet. Sinclair almost falls down. Now he gets it back out, and the Catamounts will set the offense. Some are open for three, in and out won't go. Good extra pass by Tanklitz right there. He could have taken the shot, passed up on a better shot. Summer just didn't connect. Ferguson looks to make the Catamounts pay. Nice block from Brandon Boggs. He was having none of it from Baskerville on the inside. Sumler coast to coast, fouled. And Ferguson was able to block it away. That'll lead us to our first timeout. An offensive affair early on with 13-13 to go. We're tied at 14 here in the Ramsey Center. And the first team foul on Georgia Southern official timeout. Fans at this time, we would like to welcome you to the Catamounts against Cancer game. Our Catamount men's basketball coaches and staff are wearing speakers as part of the Coaches vs. Cancer Initiative. Also, our Student Athlete Advisory Committee is up on the concourse selling shirts for just $10 that will benefit the Jackson County Relay for Life program. Pick up your shirt now and help the Catamounts in the fight against cancer. <laughs> We welcome you back to the Ramsey Center and Phillip. It has been fast paced action, back and forth, running up and down the floor in the first seven minutes or so of this one. Both teams up and down the court very quickly, Kyle, like you said. It's gonna be a transition game, it appears. But I wonder if either defense is gonna step up on this game. So far, both offenses getting whatever they want. Both offenses very efficient. Catamounts, who started with that 28% mark the first few minutes of that Davidson game. They have come out on fire, 54.5% from the field, 66% from beyond the arc. And Sumler at the line, who's shooting 
a cool, calm, and collected 83%, but he misses this one. And still a chance to give the Catamounts the lead. He steps off the line. But Phillip, really, both sides, a really efficient offense from both teams early on this afternoon. Absolutely. Both teams seem to be a hot, and it and looks like they're going to stay hot. That right there, free throw shot was a good uh, breath for both teams. That will be our fifth lead change, and we haven't played seven minutes yet. Georgia Southern backs it out. They're looking for another one here and a foul on the floor. We'll see who they get. As Ross has checked in, he might have picked up the foul. It'll be on Tankowitz. And he, he saw his name called a lot in the foul call. He fouled out late in that ball game. But so did Brandon Boggs and really could have been a big difference maker when the Catamounts had cut it to four to try to push him over the top Thursday night. Holmes has it in the backcourt, calling out the signals for the Eagles. Straightforward man-to-man -man defense from the Catamounts. 20 on the shot clock. Spot up, another jumper. This one's long. Tip, Tankowitz, and Sumler combined for the rebound. We'll give them half a board each. Sumler kick out, Tankowitz. Can he go three for three? Count it and a foul! And if you're Georgia Southern, this is an absolute nightmare seeing Tankowitz bury him from all over the place. Yeah, he's three for three now from beyond the arc, which is not a good sign if you're Georgia Southern. And what you absolutely don't want to do is, is foul a guy as he's shooting a three-point shot. Don't give him the opportunity for a four-point play. Nonetheless, they did it anyway, and Tankowitz is going to have a chance for four. The 80% free throw shooter, and Hall checks in and fills something we talked about in the pregame. A guy that played a lot, especially a year ago, hasn't seen as much action this year. But what do you like a lot so much about the athletic big man? Like you touched right there, Kyle, the athleticism. He's not much for scoring and even rebounding. He's not particularly strong. But just his length and athleticism, the ability to alter shots. Even if he doesn't block it, he's he's just there. He's a long body. He alters so many shots, Kyle. So just he's not someone who fills up the stat column, but he's definitely someone who has an impact on this game. He had a very good game against Appalachian State here a year ago where he forced a lot of blocked shots when King was in foul trouble. Really came up big in that one, so he has experience. Drive baseline, and Ferguson throws it down. A guy you don't want to leave unmanned. Sumler trying to beat him to the other end of the court. Floater got it to go. The awareness by Trey Sumler to beat Ferguson and company down on the other end of the floor. Absolutely. Georgia Southern seemed to lollygag a little bit on that play, getting back on defense, and Sumler took full opportunity of that and just took it all the way from coast to coast. It's a five-point Catamount lead. Look inside, nothing there. Get it inside, and Ross will be called for the foul before the shot. Even though Preston Ross got called for the foul, though, I like to see that right there. And I don't think Coach Hunter minds too much the physicality that Preston Ross plays with. You know what you're going to get from him game in and game out, and that's physical basketball. And that will lead us to a break. 11-24, the take with four-point play has led to a catamount five-point lead when you come back. Welcome back to the Ramsey Center, a high scoring affair, 21-16. Tankowitz, when he's, he has proven when he's not on the bench saddled with foul trouble and he gets in a rhythm, he's very dangerous already with 10 points. But maybe the most encouraging thing for the Catamount, some are only with two of those Catamount points, so a lot of offense from a lot of different people tonight. And that's, that's a sight for sore eyes if you're Coach Hunter. I mean, obviously you understand what Trey Summer can do offensively. He can get you anywhere between 20 to 30 points tonight, but it's the supporting cast. When Sumler's in trouble, can the rest of this Catamount roster step up to fill his shoes? And today they've answered that question. A good Saturday afternoon crowd here at the Ramsey Center. Reed can't connect. Loose ball initially corralled by the Golden Eagles. And now lost out of bounds. 
And the Catamounts will get possession. And Kyle, how about this offensive attack by the Catamounts shooting a blistering 61% from the field and 75% from beyond the arc. If they can keep this up, they're going to be tough to beat. Tankowitz accounting for all three of the Catamount triples here this afternoon. Sumler 0 for 1 from downtown. Sinclair thought about trying it. Now he'll drive with the left hand. They'll swing it in a blocking foul as Brown tried to drive the baseline. Eagles foul on number 32, Cameron Baskerville. That's his first. Baskerville picks up the foul. Ferguson will check out of the ball game for Georgia Southern. So a chance here for the Catamounts. Boggs will try a three. That one's short. As he had a look off the inbound. And Kyle, the Georgia Southern Eagles best player, uh, Ferguson, is now on the bench. So this is the, this is the perfect opportunity for the Catamounts to really add to their lead. Baskerville looks nowhere to go with the basketball. As he's trying to get it to number 24, but some are playing good to nine defense. C.J. Reed took a long time for him to get the basketball. Re ba nice ball reversal though, and a nice three-pointer. Baskerville, Baskerville. Baskerville hadn't hit a three all year. He's two for two tonight. And good range right there by the big fellas. Not afraid to step outside and extend the defense. Off the screen, Sinclair almost lost it. Now he corrals it, double comes baseline. Nice ball movement this is. Sumler will try a three. Won't go, but he gets his own miss. He's got himself a better look. In and out, won't go. Boggs the rebound. And the Catamounts will get a third crack at it. Boggs going to work and he's fouled hard as he hits the deck and will go to the line for a pair. So now it's the Catamounts crashing the offensive glass. That was a good possession right there if you're Coach Hunter. You're glad to see that. Although the Catamounts undersized, the effort was definitely there on their possession. That's why they were able to keep that, that particular possession alive and get themselves with a foul on. Boggs will go to the line. And as we mentioned, coming off two really fine games at Chattanooga and here Thursday night against Davidson. As the 6'5 junior misses the first, a 75% free throw shooter, but Brandon Boggs, when he is on, he is really on for this Catamount team, and he really had such a big boost, not only because of his length and athleticism defensively, but when he starts scoring the basketball, it makes the job of Trey Sumler and Tom Tankowitz that much easier. And, and Kyle, in most cases, every great team has that three or four scores, and for the most part, the Catamounts have really only had two, the constant and Trey Sumler, then every now and then you get a hot game from King or a hot game from Boggs or a hot game from the Tankowitz. You never have all those guys clicking on the same day. But so far in this ball game, it early, it's still early, all these guys seem to be coming together in the absence of Trey Sumler. They all came together. Is The Catamounts had four players near 20 points at that game at Chattanooga a week ago, and we got a foul called away from the basketball. And number Guess two who? on Tankowitz. So now he has two and has to be careful. Three-point lead at 22-19, 9.04 to go. Coach Hunter content to leave him in the ball game. But now Tankowitz has to be careful, and I think it's more important as Ferguson jams at home. It's more important because of Tankowitz's hot start. Yeah, you don't want him getting up that third foul. You got to play smart here. Your coach is trusting you to not pick up that third foul. Still a lot of time in this first half, so you, you cannot afford to get that third foul. Georgia Southern trying to run a little half-court trap. King gets a look on the inside, can't get it to go. Boggs the follow. He's fired up going to the other side of the floor. And two consecutive possessions. They have him boxed out, number 24 in white. Nice hands as Tankowitz denies the pass. That was intended for Busey of Georgia Southern. Another sharp shooter that they haven't. Everyone talks about Davidson and how well they shoot the basketball, but here's Busey who shoots over 30% from downtown. Ball comes all the way back to Holmes. Comes off the screen, looks nothing there. Now they'll get it inside, kick out. And again, the shot clock under 10. Now at five, Holmes has to go. 
Shot clock down to two, fade away, jumper won't go. Ferguson skies for the rebound, can't get the put back. Another opportunity for Georgia Southern. Ferguson again with the basketball, working on Tankowitz. This one will go. And that's just a mismatch right there. If I'm the Eagles from Georgia Southern, Ferguson's on Tankowitz offensively. Ferguson, the superior athlete, the leaping ability. That matchup definitely works in his favor over Tom Tankowitz, especially with Tankowitz's two fouls. But again, Georgia Southern takes advantage of an offensive board and cuts the lead to one. Tankowitz thought about it. That would have been a heat check from the Georgia Southern bench. Now Sumler goes to drive, double comes. Now we'll find Boggs. Boggs, a little sidestep underneath. Can't get it to go. King the rebound. Back up, and that one's good. Both teams slamming the offensive glass early and often. And the Catamounts especially, we typically don't see this from them, but it's a good team effort on the boards. They understand that they're undersized, but that's not stopping. They seem to be continuing. They're all five guys are crashing the boards on the offensive side. It's a three-point Catamount lead. Just under seven to go. And something we saw against Davidson, Davidson had to get a lot of shots really late in the shot clock. Georgia Southern started to have to do that lately. Again, it's under 10. Holmes will drive, skip pass, and it's tied up. He walked with it. And that'll walk us right to another timeout. Catamount still with a three-point lead, 25-23 in the 6.35 mark. You're watching Catamount All Access, presented by TV62. And we are back here at the Ramsey Center. A nice Saturday afternoon crowd and a nice offensive start for this Catamount team as the offensive woes that they begin the Davidson game with have melted away and they have come out torching the nets here in the first half. Yeah, they seem to forget about that nightmare shooting that they had in the first half against Davidson, but both teams really lighting up the scoreboard here. We got 46% shooting by Georgia Southern. And we, but that's typically good enough to win you a ball game and even be in the lead. However, the Catamounts are shooting 50%, so both teams really scored from the nets here. And offensive rebounds, the Catamounts have had five of them to go with five second chance points. King again on the inside. Kicks out, they left Boggs alone. Back to King and they're gonna call a charge on Boggs as he ran right through Baskerville. A good job drawing the charge, and he's had a very, very nice game for Georgia Southern, connecting from the outside a couple times. A, a big offensive rebound, and now he draws the charge on the defensive side of the floor. Yeah, and it, I agree with the call right there. Boggs didn't have much to argue about, so it's a good call by the official. But like you said, Baskerville's done a good job of really just kind of being, being around the rim at all times, even though all of his points have come from the outside, Kyle. He's been very active on the offensive side and now defensive side. Baskerville will try it again. He knocks it down again. We talk about the supporting cast for the Catamounts, but how about the Eagles as Baskerville connects from downtown? King comes to set the screen. Sumler tried to pick it. Loose ball, and now Georgia Southern's on the run. Off the turnover, Ferguson inside, and he stepped out of bounds. So good recover defense from Tom Tankowitz getting back. Yeah, Georgia Southern had the numbers there. Looked like they were going to get an easy basket in transition, but good defense by the Catamounts to get back, and not only get back, but force a turnover. Harrelson will go to the scorer's table. He'll check in next dead ball. 
As Sinclair sits and Brown comes in. Double comes to Sumler, gets it to Boggs. Swing it over to Brown, drives to the rack, and he is fouled and will go to the line to shoot a pair. So the Catamounts seem to be using this double team and attacking the glass and especially the basket off nice ball rotation and off ball screen. Yeah, and although they're having success from outside, they're also doing, they're doing a good job of getting inside and getting some baskets from the inside. But Kyle, how about the, the offensive balance that we're seeing by Weston right here? Typically, something we don't see, you know, you're gonna get it from Trey Sumler, you're gonna get it from Tankowitz, but right now, we've really got five guys all in the scoring category from the Catamounts with Tawaski with six, Tom with 10, and Trey Sumner with three and Brandon Boggs with five. Great balance right now offensively by the Catamounts. And if you're Coach Hunter, you got to love that. Brown, the West Charlotte High School grad, knocks down the first and the second. He's perfect at the line. Lead back up to two. And it will mark our sixth lead change in the first 15 minutes. Much like last year's game, Kyle. Both teams up and down. Very similar to what we saw last year here. Ferguson comes around the dribble, creates his own shot, too strong. Loose ball, Tawaski King not letting it get away. Somewhere, nice skip pass ahead to Boggs. Finds Brown and he'll go to the line again. Almost got it to fall. And how about the fast break offense, unselfish basketball. And that was pretty basketball, Kyle. Good pass right there by Trey Summer to lead Boggs towards the basket. However, good recovery defense by Georgia Southern. Boggs is able to find the open man. Although Mike Brown doesn't finish, great athleticism and really just great, like you said, non-selfish basketball right there. Back at the stripe where he hit his last two, make it three for three. A nice start for him at the free throw line. A 71% free throw shooter. In an area before Brown took the line here, the Catamounts were three of five. Now they're six of eight from the stripe. Make it seven and nine and a perfect four for four for Mike Brown making a pay on the foul on the inside. And this is a team within the Catamounts that actually struggled from the foul line early on the first week or so of the season. They couldn't really get it going from the foul line, but definitely what we've seen the last couple weeks, Kyle, is this, two, these, this Catamount team has definitely found the rhythm from the free throw line, and that's helped them win a couple of these conference games that they've won early on. It's a four-point lead. Ferguson back to work. Nice pass underneath. And a reverse lay-in is good by Holmes. Nice ball work. Ferguson not only looking for his own shot, but a lot like Summer with his offense, he makes a nice assist out of it. Summer goes opposite the ball screen. And now he'll dribble it back out. Swing it around, Harrelson. Nice, quick first step. Beautiful basketball, Brown finishes in the inside. What a work of art right there, Kyle. This beautiful, unselfish basketball on the part of the Catamounts. I tell you what, it's pass it, passing the basketball all over the floor. And Boggs had a great look in a comfortable spot, but he didn't look for his shot. He looked for the best shot and found it in Mike Brown on the low block. So Brown has given the Catamounts a spark with six points all in the last three possessions. It's a four-point Catamount lead, 3.15 to go. Defense. Defense. Nice backdoor pass. And Georgia Southern, a nice answer. And Holmes has back-to-back -back buckets for the Eagles. Good passing on both sides here, Kyle. A lot of unselfish basketball by both teams. Harrelson will drive, finds Boggs, pump and go. He'll take his shot this time, and he's fouled. And he'll go to the line. And that's something Georgia Southern's done a lot of fouling jump shooters. And we will take a break. Boggs will be at the line when you come back. It's a two-point Catamount lead with 2.57 to go on a Saturday afternoon matinee here in the Ramsey Center.
We're back at the Ramsey Center where both teams, we're talking 62 combined points just under three minutes to go here in this first half. Both teams really putting on a passing offensive clinic here so far in this one. And that's right, Kyle. Just like you said, it's not like both teams are just coming down the court jacking it up. Both teams, for the most part, have been fairly patient, getting their offense going, a lot of unselfish basketball. And it's a, like you said, dude, both, both teams scorching the nets here. The Catamounts shooting a blistering 52.4%, not to be outdone, 52.2% for Georgia Southern. But the Catamounts have gotten to the line early and often as this will be the 10th free throw the Catamounts have taken already in this game. Georgia Southern only two thus far. Boggs gets the home Ramsey roll and connects on his first. Boggs one and two in his first trip, trying to be perfect. This time he'll go one and two and split him again. Two for four from the line for him and Holmes dribbled it off his foot. Boggs is gonna make him pay. Trying to go to the basket. Can't get it to go. Follow, he'll go right back to the line and Boggs fired up down there on the low block. He may not be having the monstrous point totals, but I tell you what, Philip, he is playing a monster game early. The hustle plays he has made for this basketball team. Without a doubt, Kyle, and he's also been an animal on the glass. He's got six rebounds. That right there was his sixth rebound. It was his fourth offensive rebound. So although he's not having the scoring game that we saw against Davidson, he's much more active, and he's getting it done on the offensive glass as well. Connects on the first. And actually, it might be his seventh, because I think he got two rebounds on the same possession because he wasn't able to get it to go. So. If your field goal percentage is going to suffer, might as well help the rebounding numbers out. As Boggs, this time, nope, can't get it to go. It pops in and out. And it's a four-point Catamount lead. Reed gives it off to Roberts, who will drive the baseline. Nice jump stop on the inside. Can't get it to go. Nice follow on the inside. Guess who? Baskerville. He's having a very nice game for the Eagles. Boggs double comes, swings it around. Sumler's got an open look. He'll take it from downtown. Back iron won't go. Sumler, one of the few struggling offensively here tonight. And although he's struggling, it's still a good sign by the Catamounts. Your best player and your best offensive weapon is not really finding his rhythms thus far in this game. However, you still hold a two-point lead, so I think the Catamounts are in good shape, and they're going to live with that. Catamounts have put up 34 points, and we have just under two to go. Here in this first half, Ferguson, he'll go to work, drives, and King fouled him on the way up. He'll go to the line to shoot two. And once again, Kyle, not a bad foul. That was only Tawaski King's first foul. And the Catamounts have done a good job of staying out of foul trouble. That's only the sixth foul by the Catamounts. So even though Tawaski picks up a foul, it's only his first foul, and he didn't allow Ferguson to convert it into a three-point play. He's going to make him earn it from the foul line. Tankowitz has two, and Dunnikin, who hit that first basket for Georgia Southern, came out really hot and did some things, especially on the glass. He already has three fouls in this basketball game. As Boggs will check out, Ross is in, along with Tankowitz, and he has to be careful not to pick up three in the last 146. Absolutely, and if I'm a coach hunter, I may even consider taking him out just so he doesn't. there's not even an attempt for him to get that third foul call. But like you said, with Dunnikin over there by the Eagles picking up his third foul, that's a lot bigger than it seems because he is the inside presence for these Georgia Southern Eagles. Ferguson now playing a four or five position when a lot of times you see him playing that small forward, that three spot in the offense. Sinclair, he'll try a three. Hadn't tried one yet. That Yikes. one won't go. Sumler fights for the extra possession. And Tankowitz lost it. But the Catamounts will retain possession as it's knocked out of bounds. It'll stay here. On the floor now for Georgia Southern, number 23, Chris. Sinclair may have had a little bit of adrenaline rush, may have rushed his shot a little bit there, but definitely a shot we have seen him knock down so far in his Western Carolina career. And timeout taken by Georgia Southern, and we'll keep it here. And what has been the key, other than the supporting cast, you have to think ball movement, a lot of assists, and a lot 
of unselfish basketball leading to easy opportunities. Yeah, and so far in this game, I believe it's been the small things, like you said, the ball movement, the unselfish play. Also, you look at the fact that the Catamounts are winning the battle on the glass, which is something we typically don't see from them. Usually they are the undersized roster. However, in this one, they are winning the battle on the glass. Also look at the fact that the Catamounts have not really picked up fouls, other than with the, with the exception of Tom Tankowitz had two fouls. Nobody else has more than one. So they've done a lot of the small things which have led to their success so far. A very clean basketball game, too. Only six turnovers between the two teams combined. Both are three. Tankowitz, 4-3, got it again! Four for four in the first half from downtown. Hand down, man down, Kyle. Even though Ferguson thought he closed out fairly well, you leave Tankowitz an inch, that's still too much room. A three-point lead as Tom Tankowitz has 13 first-half points. Reed can't answer. Another offensive rebound, though, for the Eagles. And Ferguson will reset the offense under a minute to go. Looking to get it inside to Baskerville. Tankwitz on him. Nice deflection from King. Catamounts can go two for one if they hurry. Tankwitz, heat check time. Another one. That one won't go as he pump faked to get his man in the air and then took a step in, couldn't get it to go. So he didn't start out quite as hot as he did at Chattanooga where he hit his first five. But four or five, not too shabby from beyond the line. Yeah, and I don't have a problem with that shot at all. Although he missed it, Tankwitz is obviously feeling it, and he was in rhythm. It was a rhythm shot, so I don't have a problem with that shot at all. Shooters must shoot the ball. Shot clock down to 10. Two-second differential between shot and game clock. Catamounts a three-point lead. Reed will swing it around. Baskerville, another jumper. That'll go. Catamounts will hurry. Summer's going to have to put it up. It's late. And that's how the half will end. An offensive showdown we have for you today. 37 36 as we head to halftime. What are some key things you have seen from the Georgia Southern offense as they put up 36 first half points? Well, other than the fact that they can't seem to miss, Kyle, they're just, they've been patient. They've, the Catamounts have been fortunate enough to score early and often in the shot clock. Georgia Southern's have much, much, been much more patient, but however, they're still finding the stroke from both inside and outside. Baskerville, for instance, has taken it outside, and he's actually connected three times from the on the arc. Coming into this game, he hadn't hit a shot from three-point range all season. So even though also Eric Ferguson, we thought would be the main man for the Georgia Southern Eagles, he has not been. It's also been the supporting cast from the Eagles in Baskerville. Both teams have six different scores, none of whom have less than three points. Obviously, Tankowitz, the leading scorer with 13. How does Georgia Southern try to counteract him and cool him off from beyond the arc? Well, what they were doing early on is they tried to stick Ferguson being 6'7 on Tankowitz, thinking that the size may bother him. That obviously hasn't worked because sometimes when a guy's hot, he's just too hot to handle. So for Georgia Southern, the best thing I can think of is maybe you try to take away the supporting cast. Boggs and Tankwitz are in the zone. Defensively, they haven't done a bad job. It's just been better offense as opposed to good defense in this game. We will take a break at halftime. 37-36, Catamount lead. We'll step aside and let you enjoy the debut in 2013 of Purple Thunder, the Catamount drumline, getting set to go to work and revive this Ramsey Center Saturday afternoon crowd. We'll be back after Purple Thunder on Catamount All Access, presented by TV62. And we welcome you back to the Ramsey Center. Purple Thunder, an impressive performance as always. And speaking of impressive, rather, performances, a heck of a performance by both offenses. Very, very efficient, both teams so far in the first half. Yeah, Kyle, a lot of, like you said, a lot of sufficiency, a lot of balance, too, by both teams. Not with the exception of Tom Tango with 13, with 13 points, there isn't another person on either side in double figures. A lot of balance on both sides, which is, as a defense, that makes it very hard for you to contain everybody because you have to worry about everybody scoring. So right now, Kyle, I think the biggest thing has been the fact that there's been balance on both offenses. And if you told most Catamount fans that the Catamounts would have 37 points at halftime, have a one-point lead over Georgia Southern, 
and Trey Sumler only have three points. People say, well, who else is stepping up? Tom Tangowitz, as you alluded to, 13 points. Boggs, seven and six, 7.6 boards in that first half. Yeah, Colin, it's good to see that right there because, like you said, it's been the Trey Slummer show in most cases where Trey Slummer's got 20 points and everyone else is in single digits. And so it's always been kind of a, a thing here as Catamount's wondering, well, if what ha something happens to Trey Slummer, what if he can't get it done, who's the next man? Well, the Catamounts has answered that question so far today, and it's all of them. Everyone has stepped up. Tawaski King's been quiet, but he's got six points, three rebounds. Tankowitz with 13 points. As you said, Boggs with 7.6 rebounds. So all that summer struggling a lot, that's because he's being defended by Eric Ferguson with a link by Georgia Southern. Everyone else has been able to step up and really fill his shoes and fill his role that he's not been able to do. And I tell you who else has been huge. Mike Brown, three consecutive possessions, six big points off the bench for the purple and gold. Now, looking to the second half, what do the Catamounts have to do to be as efficient as they were in half number one and come out heavy here with a W? Obviously keep doing the same thing, Kyle. They may see a different look from Georgia Southern's defensively, maybe to throw them out of their offensive rebound. But right now what you're doing is perfect basketball, Kyle. As we talked about a little bit at halftime, so far it's been a work of art by the Catamounts offensively. A lot of unselfish basketball, a lot of passing going on. A lot of guys giving up a good shot for a better shot. So right now I think you got to continue that. Sumler, while he may not have a lot of points, does have five assists as Boggs Skip passes it into the third row. It'll be a quick turnover for both teams. Georgia Southern only with five, Catamounts only with three in the first half. But we see a quick one here from both teams to start half number two. And that was almost too, too unselfish right there by Brandon Boggs. He had an open look. He tried to find King on the inside, which you can never fault the guy for wanting to pass the ball and look for a teammates. But probably should have shot that basketball rather than look to pass. Inside, Ferguson can't handle two. Possessions, two turnovers for the Eagles. Cross court pass, Tankowitz will spot up that one offline. Boggs mistimed his jump, but King is there. He's blocked from behind. A nice defensive play from Georgia Southerns. Sam Mike, who got in there with a heck of a play defensively. Loose ball on the floor, Mike and Boggs. And Sinclair, I believe, in there as well. It'll be a jump ball, possession arrow stays with the Eagles. And so far, we've seen more defense in the first 51 seconds of this half than we saw all of last half. <laughs> It'll be Georgia Southern basketball. Ferguson will trigger the inbound. And that has been something that has worked for Georgia Southern's defense. Ferguson, that matchup on Trey Sumler, as you alluded to at the game's tip. And an offensive foul will go the other way. So another turnover for Georgia Southern. Three turnovers in the first half and as many possessions. They only had five the entire first half. Summer will come around a king screen. Now picks up his dribble and will reset the offense. Skip pass to Boggs. He'll finish with the right hand off the window. No good. And that's the type of shot that recently he has made look so easy. Yeah, that, that is his shot, and he just missed it right there, so not a big deal. And, Kyle, I can't get over how clean of a first half we saw. And then so far here in the first minute and a half of the second half, it's been rather herky-jerky, a lot of missed shots, a couple turnovers, I think three to be exact, some missed easy baskets, a couple fouls. So, so far we have a different look in the second half as we did the first half. Inbound play comes in. As Reed looks to turn the corner, can't do it. Skip pass inside, box contesting, not good enough as Sam Mike. Mike knocks it down from over the top. A nice move from him on the low block. Now it's a turnover for the Catamount. Sumler lost it. Lost his shoe as well. Tries to get back on defense. Kick out three, that'll go. And a timeout so Sumler can get his shoe back as he tried to hustle down the other end of the floor. But just like Georgia Southern started half number one, they started half number two with a 5-0 run, and it's resulted in a four-point lead. So Tanglewitz will come to inbound the basketball. Sumner laces up his shoe. 
And again, Georgia Southern showing some full court pressure. Summer comes to get the basketball. Ferguson almost poked it away. He's going to be whistled for the foul. And confusion. Sumler thought there was a foul call. And so Sumler picked up the basketball. And one official called traveling. And now they will call the foul. Almost reminiscent of that Packers Seahawks game where one calls touchback, the other calls it a touchdown. So Sumler lacing up his other shoe now. And confusion on both ends. Sumler had stopped because he had thought that a foul had been called, as it was. Ferguson is his first. King all the way to the basket, can't finish. A nice move all the way to the rack, but he couldn't get it to go with the left hand. And so often we see that, Kyle, a good move by King to get himself free, to get himself in position for a basket, and so many times we see him unable to finish. Ferguson does finish a nice reverse layup, King Top of the key, rattles around and in. And as soon as I say something about him, I guess he didn't like what I had to say. He goes ahead and proves me wrong by knocking down the jump. And that's a shot, Philip. We saw him taking warm-ups, and he knocked it down with some consistency. So a lot of people might say, well, why is he shooting it three feet behind the free throw line? Well, he's proven in warm-ups that he's can, he can make them. And something he's really worked hard on is to extend his, his range in scoring the basketball. Catamounts with trailing by four, but they're still getting good looks, Philip. especially offensively. They're just not falling like they did half number one. Yeah, Kyle, like you said, they are getting the good looks, and the shots are just not falling. However, I don't think it's time to change game plans. It's been working for the majority of the game, so continue to do what you're doing. I like the unselfishness that we're seeing. So for the Catamounts, just continue to stick with your stuff. It's been working for you so far. 43-39, 17-32 to go here in half number two. And if you're Georgia Southern, you have to like how your team has come out here in the second half. Yeah, they came out of the gates real early in the second half and jumped on second half and jumped on these catamounts early. The defensive intensity for the Georgia Southern Eagles has definitely picked up and led to a few turnovers by the catamounts. So the catamounts will take the floor first, coming out of the timeout. And if you're Coach Hunter, what was your message to your team? As you've seen, Georgia Southern come out, they turned over the basketball, weren't able to take advantage or the catamounts, and then Georgia Southern started firing again from the floor. Just to settle down. Everything kind of fell your way in the first half. You had the lead. Offensively, you got whatever you wanted. So just really just to settle down and to continue to do what you've been doing. Catamounts now showing some full court pressure. And now Sumler will retreat as Reed tries to beat him off the dribble. And now they'll switch back on the screen. Baskerville kicks it out. Now Roberts and Georgia Southern will reset. 10 on the shot clock. Reed trying to penetrate this duo of Summer and King. And Sinclair gets a hand on it. King, loose ball on the floor. And Sam Mike and a foul. No, they got to jump ball first. And again, we see two officials, two different signals. It will be a jump ball. So it'll be Catamount basketball. Yeah, Kyle, it appears that we're not the only two guys that stay confused <laughs> on a regular basis. It's also these officials. That's now the second time that they've done that. But however, that actually works out in the Catamount's favor. It looked like they were gonna give a foul on Tawaski King. However, one official overruled the other. They decide on a jump ball and it actually works out in the Catamount's favor as they retain possession. Sumler calls the offense Ferguson. Good defensive job on Sumler. He has had a defensive masterpiece in a game that showcased a lot of offense thus far. Yeah, he's kept Sumler bottled up for the most part. Tankowitz drives a little floater. That'll go, and the Catamounts are on the board here in half number two, a shot that we've seen them use more and more as the season's gone on. Reed, spin move, jump cut, and Summer picked his pocket. Loose ball, and this time they will call a foul. It'll be on Sinclair on the low block. 
Teams first, I believe it'll be Sinclair's second. Eagles foul number 24. No, they'll call the offensive foul. I beg your pardon, it'll be on Reed, his first. So they called it when Sinclair was going for the basketball. Could have gone either way. This one will go in the Catamount's favor. Ross almost turns it over, and they look like bowling pins on the court as they're all hitting the deck. Another jump ball, and this one will go to Georgia Southern. Yeah, Kyle, this is more of a rugby match now that we've <laughs> seen the past two or three possessions where five and six bodies keep continuing to hit the floor. However, you like to see that if you're both coaches, guys willing to give up their bodies for the possession. A lot of hustle, a lot of bodies hitting the deck early on in the second half, and a lot more defense as we're at the 16.05 mark. It's a two-point Georgia Southern lead. They came out with that quick 5-0 start, have not scored since. So now, Holmes will work the offense. And an offense, no, they got him with a walk. Ferguson frustrated with a call, and that will lead us to immediate timeout. Defense starting to take over here in the Ramsey Center. It's a two-point Georgia Southern lead with 15.53 to go. When you come back to the Ramsey Center in a SoCon showdown. Welcome back to the Ramsey Center. A defensive struggle is that first four-minute segment, so to speak, was won 5-2 by Georgia Southern. It's opened up a two-point lead. What has been the difference on the, both offensive ends as both of them have slowed down from that first half? Well, obviously, I think the defensive intensity has picked up, but also a little bit of sloppy execution by both offenses here so far in the second half. We've seen a lot more, We saw almost as many turnovers so far in this second half as we saw all the first half. There's also been a few fouls, too. So it's between the fouls and the turnovers, it's really put a damper on the, the tempo of this game. Trey Sumler gets the bucket. Only his fifth point of the night, and Georgia Southern has already equaled their turnovers from the first half with five here in half number two, 10 total. There's and make number it, six. Number six is Ferguson. Had Butterfingers on the far sideline, and. Coach Young making sure he calls his defensive set before he gives the ball back to the official. <laughs> and now the official asking him to move out of the way. He was playing referee there was Coach Young over on the far side. He was trying to hand the ball to Ross, took it back. <laughs> so now Ross with the basketball. Summer off the screen and off to the races. Hangs in the air and finishes. Well, if you want to press, you better make sure someone has back and is ready to stop away a runaway freight train and train somewhere. And the thing was, Kyle, was they had him double teamed before the ball was even inbounded. He just used his speed and blew by right past him all the way to the basket. Now somewhere picking it up defensively as well. Holmes has somewhere in his hip pocket as he receives the basketball. Shot clock down to 10. Now Holmes goes to work. Nice floater in the lane. Won't go. King the rebound. Somewhere into the front court. Finds an open tankle. It's for three. No good. Loose ball. Sinclair comes away with it. He tries to go up. That one's blocked. Tip won't go. And Tankowitz. A nice rebound. Tip in off the backboard. 
And great effort right there, not giving up by the Catamounts. They continued to fight inside, and they got away. With, they came away with the basket. And how about the work? Tankle, it's known for his outside perimeter game, but doing the dirty work on the glass, he gets the tip in, and now it's a Catamount four-point lead and a big-time run. And a foul called on Ross as the Catamounts thought they had yet another turnover. Somewhere in Tankwitz, we're on each side running a fly route down the sideline. Ready for the outlet pass. But we want to talk about this run. Georgia Southern started out on a 5 0 run, had a 43 39 lead. They have not scored since. It is an 8 0 Catamount run. Ferguson. Dan Perzat is finally he's able to finish on the inside. That is the second time that he's been able to do that. He did, he got away with it in the first half and he got away with it right then. The Catamount's got to wake up on defense. Not only is that embarrassing to let that happen once, but much less twice. Somewhere now at the top, read on him. Somewhere step back, looks for Ross in the paint, and he draws the foul as Baskerville commits the foul, that will be his second. As Georgia Southern will sub out for Ferguson, and Chris Daniels will come into the ball game. Not much on the stat sheet for him. One rebound in a minute of play. Nice zip pass from Ross. Boggs can't finish on the inside, gets it back. All sorts of contact, no call. Boggs again will try it. Swing pass somewhere, he'll spot up for three. That one won't go. And a nice defensive board by Baskerville as they look to clear it out. And this game has really picked up with the physical play by both teams on the offense and defensive side, Kyle. Ross hits the deck, it's another turnover. And another foul. And this one will go on Daniels. The fourth team foul for Georgia Southern already in this half. And Bussy will come in. Roberts checks out. And Trey Sumler dribbles the basketball up the floor. It's Catamounts lead by two. Boggs upset at himself that he didn't finish. Goes back to work. Sets up Ross. He'll try the triple. That one's long. Sinclair can't quite get to this one. And now Georgia Southern trying to run. Catamounts get back defensively. And now Georgia Southern will reset. And Kyle, a tale of two halves right here as both offenses were scorching the net in the first half. It's been the defensive dominating so far in this half. And an air ball on a layup and if you're going to shoot one, if you're the away team doing it into the Cat House Bay and not the place to do it. And another whistle as Tawaski King will come back on the floor. As he had a clear path and a clear look with that left hand and came up with nothing but air. Offenses have slowed it down. The defensive and physical intensity has really picked up here in half number two. Somewhere looking to come around the screen. He's doubled, dribbles around both of them, finds an open Brandon Boggs, who tries to work with the dribble, now hands it to Tom. 10 on the shot clock as Sinclair fields it on the wing. With a right hand all the way to the rack, he'll make the finish with a right hand. Sinclair says, may I have this dance as he takes it to the rack and finishes with a lay-in. Reed trying to get this Eagles offense to respond as they have gone quiet since the start of this half. And a lot more turnovers forced by this Catamount defense. Ramsey all the way to the rack, he'll roll it in. That's Bussy, beg your pardon. He, but this time, a much more body control drive to the rack that time from Bussy. King lost it, it's another Catamount turnover. Reed the runner, won't go. And Boggs cleans up the glass. His eighth board 
here in this one so far this afternoon. Yeah, Kyle, he's done a great job of being more than just a scorer tonight. We know he got 20 points against Davidson on Thursday night, and that was beyond huge. But so far in today's game, he's done a good job of working hard on the glass. And I believe, yep, it is a foul on Baskerville. That'll be his third. We will take immediate timeout. Tawaska King was fouled. The Catamounts will have the ball, and you come back with a two-point lead, 10-45 to go in this one. Don't go anywhere. It's another barn burner here in the Ramsey Center. Welcome back to the Ramsey Center. Defense starting to take over. Catamount's a two-point lead. But one thing the Catamount defense has really done, they've turned over Georgia Southern a lot here with six of them here in the second half. Yeah, and they've done a good job of frustrating Eric Ferguson. Six of those turnovers by the Eagles come at the hands of Eric Ferguson. So they've done a good job of flustering him, both offensively, as he hadn't been able to get the handle on some of these balls. And he remains on the bench because of it. Catamount basketball as they get set to inbound on the far side. Tankowitz finally fields it. Now he'll swing it over Boggs right down Main Street. And this one will be an offensive foul as Boggs plows over number 18 in blue. That's Boggs' third. So something to look out for if you're the Catamounts. Boggs with three, Tankowitz with two. Baskerville does have three for Georgia Southern. And Kyle, I think the question is for Georgia Southern now with Baskerville really struggling to find his, his shot here in the second half. And with Ferguson on the bench, where does Georgia Southern turn to for offense? Loose ball and Georgia Southern will get it. And that jump hook was woefully short from Roberts. And Georgia Southern now will inbound with a fresh 35. And they will throw it all the way back into the backcourt. And reset the offense. They still trail by two. They look for three. They found all three. Roberts will give us our eighth lead change here this afternoon. 50, 49, under 10 to go. King, nice swing pass. Brown, he'll go hard to the rim, and he is fouled. In a place where he thrived in the first half, hitting all four of his attempts from the line, he's going back there here after a nice take to the rim. Yeah, and I like this kid's toughness. He's fearless. He's undersized, but it doesn't stop him. He continues to take the ball inside. Not scared of the big guy, not, not afraid to go inside amongst the bigs and finds himself at the free throw line again. Brown misses his first free throw of the night as that one fell short. Catamount still trail by one. Brown trying to tie it here with 9.41 to go. And he's perfect on the second. Sinclair comes back into the ball game. Tankowitz will take a seat. Even at 50 as we enter to the fourth quarter, so to speak, with under 10 to go here in the second half. Yeah, Colin, we couldn't have predicted it to be any other way other than this, especially after last season. 
coming down to the final gun when Georgia Southern hits a three-point shot to win this ball game. We win that ball game, and now this ball game, we're deadlocked at 50 under 10 minutes to go. This may come down to who has the ball last. Sumler called for the reach-in foul as Brown had already hit the deck trying to get another turnover. And that game you alluded to last year was a 68-65 contest. Kenny Hall comes back into the game for Tawaski King, so the big man will get a breather. Gives him a chance to rest up right now. Kenny Hall going to play some valuable minutes. Freshen Tawaski King up so he can make the final push when this game gets done towards the wire. Another foul. I believe this one will be on Brown. And they'll say he was in the act of shooting. So Roberts will go to the free throw line. A 78% free throw shooter for Georgia Southern. Chance to give the Eagles the lead again. First is in and out, no good. And Kyle, this is the end that you don't want to shoot at if you're Georgia Southern. Staring straight into the teeth of the Cat House band. Robert sets for the second. That one will go. So a 78% free throw shooter splits. You got to think that's a win if you're the Catamounts. Ferguson back in the game. And Coach Young sets his press yet again. Sinclair tries to beat it off the bounce. Shows patience now. Now he'll go to work. Pulls it back out. Looks for help. Now he gets the ball to Sumner. Under 20 on the shot clock. Nine minutes to go in this one. Catamounts trail by one. Traffic all around Trey Sumler. Four on the shot clock. He has a create. Shot won't go. Bad possession by the Catamounts right there. Trey Sumner hung on to it too long. You got to look to pass when you're bottled up like that. Georgia Southern was all over him that possession. And they get the ball back, with maintaining that one-point lead. You got to trust your teammates, Kyle. I think Sumner tried to do entirely too much right there. Foul will be caught on Kenny Hall. Both teams with 16 fouls. So the next foul, both teams will be in the bonus. But the rest of the way, here in this one, as the Catamount set up defensively, Georgia Southern looking to extend that one-point lead. Bussey goes around Kenny Hall. Now they set it up. Double comes. Roberts can't finish. Rebound inside and a foul called. It might be Hall again. Catamounts can hope it's all it is, as Boggs was in there as well. And again, an offensive rebound creating an opportunity for the Eagles. At the line shooting two for the Eagles, number 10, Marvin Bainham. And Bainham at the line misses the first. Made him only a 52% free throw shooter, so if you're going to put a guy on the line, not a bad guy to put there if you're the Catamounts. Second free throw is good. However, that foul by the Catamounts is their 17th foul, so Georgia Southern will shoot free throws the rest of the way as the next foul will be a one-on-one -on -one situation. Boggs now trying to make him pay on the break. Nice, skip pass inside. Brown will go back to the line. The seventh team foul for Georgia Southern, and Boggs got that pass from Hall, and it was off to the races right through the heart of the press. Yeah, Kyle, no question about it. No, no time wasted at all by the Catamounts getting into their break, and Mike Brown finds himself on the free throw line once again. 8-0-1 to go. Brown at the line, shooting two. Can't hit the first. King. King will check back into the ball game with 8-1 to go. And Reed also comes in for Georgia Southern. Brown trying to make it a one-point game. Oh, 
And he goes 0 for 2, something he hasn't done much of, struggle at the line. Georgia Southern still leads by two. Under eight to go. Lob pass inside. Ferguson, a monster throwdown, and he hurt himself in the process. And whistle, and Ferguson is hurt. He's going straight to the end of the bench as we take a timeout. A big play from Coach Ferguson, but how much will it cost them? We'll find out. They lead by four with 7.45 to go. And we welcome you back to the Ramsey Center. Catamounts trail by four after a monster dunk from Ferguson on the alley-oop, but he has to go to the bench as he was in clear discomfort after throwing that one down. But appears to be okay as he's on the half-court side of the bench. Loose ball. Fought for as they pick Sumler's pocket. Sumler fights for the jump ball. And it'll stay in the Catamount's possession. And that was just careless ball protection right there by Trey Sumler. As the point guard, you're expected to be the best ball handler on the floor and really just allow the defender to reach in there and take it right from him. And now we're More having, confusion. <laughs> I believe this is a shot clock issue. I don't believe there was a foul or a game clock issue perhaps. So they get it cleared up. Sinclair will inbound. They reset the shot clock with seven and a half to go. Catamounts down four, need to make something happen offensively. Sumler has defenders all over him. And timeout called by Coach Hunter. He had seen Coach enough of that. 30 second timeout, we'll keep it here. So Georgia Southern has really started to get into the shorts of Trey Summer, especially with that double team near half court. How do the Catamounts counter? Well, for the most part, the, the double team really hasn't caused them too many problems. We've seen Trey Summer on more than one occasion able really just to dribble his way out of it because of his skill and because of his quickness. However, we saw right there, the double team seemed to work and forced the Catamounts to use a timeout. So the Catamount shooting 37.5% from the floor here in half number two, contrary to the 46.2% they did in the first half. Georgia Southern holding par actually better this half, but they've turned the basketball over more with 12 in the game and seven of those coming here in the second half. King spin move goes to the rack, got it to go. A big Catamount bucket there provided by the big man. Fundamental right there, Kyle. Beautiful spin move by the big fella. Showing a little bit of finesse, a little touch. Screen comes, good defense. And the Catamounts rotate back into position. Georgia Southern tries to set it up again. Reed now double teamed as they pull one out of the Catamount playbook, able to get out of it and finish at the rim. As Bussy, the beneficiary of a wonderful dish after the split of the double team. 
And good awareness right there by C.J. Reed. Didn't panic, although double teamed, and he had picked up his dribble. He stayed poised and was able to find the open man for an easy basket down low. Sumler now will post up. He's got him one-on-one. -on -one. Turnaround jumper finished with the right hand is short. And Georgia Southern looks to push with a four-point lead as we approach the six-minute mark here in the second half. Reed finally gets some help via the screen. Bussy trying to drive right at Tankowitz, who has been awfully quiet here in half number two so far. Bussy will try the baseline jumper, short, no good. Tankowitz the rebound, he'll bring it into the front court. Boggs finds King, he's doubled, doesn't matter. Splits the double when he gets it on the block. It almost doesn't matter how many people are down there if he's got an angle to the rack. That's a strong man, Kyle. I'm not even sure a double team right there can contain someone that strong as Tawaski King. Usually when he gets possession down low, it's hard to stop him. Two-point game, Reed. He'll extend it back to four. A big bucket from Reed, and he's had a pretty big game here as well. Not necessarily scoring-wise, but nine assists so far here this afternoon. Boggs, he'll try it from downtown, shot won't go. Rebound comes to Georgia Southern by Baskerville. And Ferguson has not checked back into this basketball game since that alley-oop dunk. He is over at the scores table now. He's sitting over there like he's in timeout. <laughs> so, We'll have to see how it looked like an injury to maybe the midsection is a big three. Georgia Southern knocks it down. It's Bussy again. Seven point lead now. Boggs with the left hand, spins back right, hangs in the air, got it, plus the foul. The hoop and the harm for Brandon Boggs as he creates offense when the Catamounts need it the most. Absolutely stops the bleeding right there. Georgia Southern's gone on a little bit of a run, but good patience by the Catamount offense right there, finding the best shot. Boggs is able to get his man in the air. Now he puts himself in position for a three-point play the old-fashioned way. The seven-point lead that Georgia Southern had before that Boggs bucket equals their largest lead of the ball game. Your attendance here tonight, the listed attendance at 1,983 here in the Ramsey Center. Watching what has been a very good basketball game as Boggs converts the three-point play. The lead is now four. Now the Catamounts need to stop. And Kyle Ferguson has returned for Georgia Southern. What appeared to be a finger injury, or maybe you mentioned a midsection injury. Not a lot of details on that, but he is back in the game. We will see how it affects his play. Nice pass, but he couldn't handle it. Could Baskerville. Catamounts now into the front court. The eighth turnover for Georgia Southern here in the second half. And now the Catamounts will set up the offense. Boggs on the far side. He'll pull up another jumper in and out. King the rebound. Lost it as he put the ball on the floor. And Larry Hunter almost seemingly upset that Boggs put the ball on the floor. Or King, rather. As when the big man puts the ball on the floor, a lot of guards can then reach in and snatch it away as they did there. And that'll lead Georgia Southern to take a timeout. Four point game, 3.35 to go. How do the Catamounts eclipse this deficit and not only match Georgia Southern, but take the lead here late in this ball game? Well, I think it starts with defense, Kyle. Georgia Southern's really taking their foot off the gas as far as tempo and pushing it offensively. Georgia Southern's they're a lot more patient thus far so lately. The Catamounts, I think you stick to what you're doing. Trace, the ball's gonna be in Trey Summer's hand. It needs to be in Trey Summer's hand. Georgia Southern's gonna expect that though. Look for the double team to continue. Trey Summer needs to try to get inside and see if he can kick it out. Look for Tankowitz looming around the, looming around the three point line. CJ Reed who averages 24 points a game for Georgia Southern. Held to five thus far here this afternoon but he's made a difference passing the basketball. Trey Sumler averages about 18 a contest. He's stuck on seven, but also with four assists. 
And three boards for the Catamounts. Both teams in the bonus as we approach the three minute mark. Catamounts trail 61-57. Reed way downtown and not the shot Georgia Southern probably wanted out of the timeout. And they're gonna call a travel which will lead us to immediate timeout. Georgia Southern basketball, they lead by four. 3.06 to go and you return to Catamount All Access presented by TV62. Three oh six to go in this one. Another barn burner shaping up here in the Ramsey Center. 57-61, your score. Georgia Southern leads. Trey Sumler turns the basketball over, driving to the basket. But Reed on that last one seems like he tried to force the offense a little bit for Georgia Southern as he took one almost from the WCU logo at half court. Turnover, King Nub, they got it back. King almost cleanly intercepted the pass. And Ferguson to the rescue there as he was able to tip it back to Reed. And get the ball into the Georgia Southern front court. Another loose ball. Again, Georgia Southern is able to corral it. 13 turnovers for Georgia Southern. That has been a problem for them, especially here in the second half. And good patience right here by Georgia Southern, content to obviously run some shot clock. Ferguson for three, nothing but air. Yikes. Loose ball. King the rebound. Summer will swing it over to Boggs. Zip pass a little late. Sinclair got it back though and puts it in. Crowd on their feet, it's a two point game. And we have a whistle and I think a turnover. He stepped over the end line. Catamount basketball and a bonehead play. My goodness. If you're Georgia Southern and Coach Young, he's across half court as he calls timeout. And I, I don't know exactly who it was that inbounded the basketball, but something fundamental is stepping over the end line. Maybe the dumbest of their 14 turnovers here tonight. And that just can't happen, Kyle. Two minutes left in the ball game, two point lead. Obviously a slight shift in momentum with the Catamounts getting that basket. The crowd gets back into it. And what do you do? You Like you said, Dumbins turnover. You can't do that. You get you hand the ball over. Not only do you give it right back to Weston, but you give it to them under their own basket. Catamounts get the ball down two. However, as hot as Tankowitz was from downtown, Catamounts have not hit a three. 0 for 5 here in the second half. So down two. Summer will trigger the inbound. Finds King, now he gets the ball back. Drives to the lane. Boggs pulls up to his shot, can't get it to go. Tankowitz tried to get the offensive board, but Ferguson reaches over him and grabs the loose ball. Georgia Southern dodges the bullet right there. And with Ferguson's size and athleticism, that's a battle that Tankowitz is gonna lose every time. Double comes, Reed in trouble. And another timeout called by Georgia Southern. But good defense. Almost out of Georgia Southern's playbook, that half court trap. And they obviously were not expecting that at all. The Eagles are using a 30 second timeout. 
30 second timeout. And just about every statistical category is close as rebounding there within one. Catamounts have 12 on the offensive glass. Field goal percentage, Georgia Southern's really taken advantage of, but they've negated that with all their turnovers here in half number two. Yeah, definitely some missed opportunities here by Georgia Southern. They, they, they've had more than one, two, three opportunities to extend this lead and just haven't been able to do it. Allowed this Western Carolina team to hang around, which could prove fatal. Anytime you let the Catamounts hang around, they usually make you pay. So this is gonna be a very interesting minute and 52 seconds left. You talk about balance offensively. How about Georgia Southern? 25 points off the bench here in this one. Up to this point, under two to go. Georgia Southern leads by two. Triple on the way, that one's short. That would have been big if it fell. Bussy can't get it to go. Sinclair comes into the front court. He had a good look at it, was just unable to execute. Good defense by Roberts, stopping Sinclair as he was trying to go to the basket. Boggs, he'll take it. And he is fouled as he tried to go. And it looked like he was debating whether to try to kiss it off the window or take it straight at it. He looked like he was caught in between, but he did draw the contact and two big free throws coming up with 125 remaining. And his team down two. And the Catamounts need to take advantage of these opportunities from the foul line. The clock stopped right now, so you don't have to worry about any time running off. Perfect opportunity to get yourself to draw even. Catamounts two of six from the free throw line now here in the half as Boggs missed the first. 11 of 19 here in the ball game. Boggs gets set for the second. In and out, won't go, loose ball. And Georgia Southern's able to corral it. Ferguson settles it down for the Eagles, but a big missed opportunity as Boggs missed two at the line, a 75% free throw shooter, and Ferguson makes some pay on the other end. The Catamounts just lost them right there, Kyle. They did a good job of containing everybody else, but they let Ferguson slip free. Tankowitz tries to drive with the left hand, and it's off a read. Georgia Southern will maintain possession, but down four, 59.6 to go, 26 on the shot clock for the Catamounts. They need a bucket here under a minute, trailing by four. Somewhere finds Sinclair, who's doubled in the corner. Gets it out and turns it over. Roberts off to the races, foul and one. Tankowitz got him on the arm, and that is a huge play for Georgia Southern. They extend the lead to six and a chance to match their largest of the day at seven if they're able to knock this one down. Yeah, Kyle, obviously the double team is beginning to bother these guards by Western Carolina. Sinclair was forced in the corner, threw a dumb pass across trying to find King. It was picked off. And then Tom Tankowitz just adds to it by fouling the guy after he's already made the basket, giving him a chance for three-point play. Roberts at the line. Two of four on the day. He has stepped here for one. Georgia Southern, a six-point lead. He missed yet another one. My goodness, what a good free throw shooter he normally is. Has not been today. He's a 76% shooter on the year. Another turnover. Ferguson flushes it away. A big-time play there, and that might be the dagger for the Catamounts. They now trail by eight. Tankowitz trying to make amends with the shot. He got it to go. Time out, and don't go anywhere just yet. He turns it over, but he makes amends with a huge three. The lead is now five with 32.6 to go. Although he did hit that three-point shot right there, Kyle, I think that turnover that led to the Ferguson dunk was worse than trying to make up for that three-point shot. That turnover was huge. Five-point lead with only 30 seconds left. This game's far from over. Anything can happen in 32 seconds. However, you gotta be smarter with the ball like that. It's late in the ball game, and you're turning the ball over two two times in a row. Two very stupid turnovers by the Catamounts, and they prove costly. But, as you say, not over by any means. We talked about how the Catamounts couldn't capitalize at the line. Georgia Southern only two of five this half from the stripe as well. 
Yeah, Kyle, so both both teams missing opportunities here. Georgia Southern perhaps missing opportunities to put this game away by leaving points at the free throw line. And the Catamounts blowing opportunities to catch back up by turning it over. No lead this game has been larger than seven. Georgia Southern leads by five right now with 32.6 to go. Brown checks into the ball game. A lot of speed on the court with Sinclair, Sumler, Boggs, Tankowitz, and Brown. And trying to force that steal, a problem that has been for Georgia Southern. Turning it over, they almost did here. Tankowitz came oh so close to intercepting that one. On the near side, ball goes out of bounds. And now they want to switch inbounders. They want the taller Ferguson to inbound the basketball. The negative if you're Georgia Southern, he can't get it. Nice pass, Bussy lays it in, gets the two points, the lead is seven, a big bucket there. Tankowitz finds Boggs on the inside, gets it to go, timeout, Coach Hunter. Back to a five point game, 69, 64, 23 to go. So if you're Coach Hunter, Talking strategy here. Obviously, you go for the steal, but only three guys for Georgia Southern have taken free throws. Ferguson's two of two. Roberts, two of five. And Bainham at one of two on the day. Who do you try to foul here if you're the Catamounts? Well, unfortunately, Kyle, due to the time left on the clock, you don't have the luxury of picking out who you'd like to send to the line. You got to go for the steal as soon as the ball is inbounded. If you don't get it, you got to foul. And unfortunately, because of the foul situation, Georgia Southern is going to shoot free throws. So you can't really, you can't afford to be picky right now at the Catamounts. You pretty much just got to foul whoever gets it. The next foul will also be the tenth team foul, so that means Georgia Southern would get two. But they got to inbound the basketball first. Ferguson and Baskerville will go to the line. If you're Georgia Southern, a great guy to go to the line. 94% on the season. Heading to the line for Georgia Southern. And he has had some big, big plays in this game. Has been quiet here in the second half, but a chance to really so help solidify things for his ball club with 22 seconds to go. Yeah, and if you're the Eagles, obviously this is who you want taking the foul shots. However, these will be his first foul shot attempts. So keep it interesting. And that, that, you know, is an interesting point. However, he is 94%. The fact that he hasn't taken one so far might stick with him. In and out won't go, Sinclair the rebound. 94%, doesn't matter in the clutch. Catamounts need a bucket, they need a quick. Sinclair will try a three, won't go. Loose ball out of bounds, and I believe it'll be Georgia Southern basketball. As they lead by five, that three would have cut it to two. Sinclair could not get it to go, and Brown will come back into the game for defensive purposes. Ferguson trying to inbound the ball yet again. They get it to Baskerville, who just missed, but a 94% free throw shooter. So interesting, Coach Young said, all right, you may have missed that one, but we're going to put you back at the line. Now for two shots for Baskerville with his team up five. And you got to think, Kyle, if he's, if he's able to convert both these attempts here, this game is most likely out of reach. But one still... Not over yet. Baskerville. First attempt, no good. My goodness, 94%. Oh for two here in the last two possessions in the last minute of a ball game. Yeah, it appears the Eagles and more importantly, Baskerville is, would rather have this game interesting than go ahead and put it away. So it'll be a two possession game regardless. That one will fall. Got to have a quick three right here, Kyle. 11.3 to go, down six. Can't waste any time. Got to have a quick shot, quick shot. Sumler brings it across. Boggs, he'll try the deuce. He got it to go. Boggs. Lead is four. Four seconds to go. The Catamounts let a lot of time go away on that possession. Too much time. And Busey will fi be fouled with three seconds to go. This will also be his first attempt at foul shots today. Well, with three seconds to go, 
If you're Georgia Southern, regardless of these free throws, you say don't foul. Because even if you miss, the only way the Catamounts seemingly could tie this one would be with a three and get fouled. And he got the roll, makes it a five-point game. So now even that's out of the possibility. Other than the shooter, all Georgia Southern players in the backcourt. The second is good. So Busey perfect to the line. Sumler will put it up. Well, nope, nope, he'll just dribble it out. Final score, 72-66. Catamounts fall again here at home. Their fourth loss here at home this season. Back-to-back -back losses now, and the road doesn't get any easier if you're the Catamounts. A three-game road trip upcoming for Western Carolina. They, go, they have a week off. They got Boone, the Boone Goons in Appalachian State next Saturday, who they beat here in the Ramsey Center. Then next Thursday, the 7th, they play at Davidson. And two weeks from today, they will have a rematch against the same Georgia Southern squad in Statesboro before coming home to play Wofford. So the road not getting any easier for the Catamounts. But remember, the Catamounts struggled this part of the year a year ago as well. And they caught fire at the end of the year. And a lot of times, coaches will tell you it's about catching fire at the end of the season. Yeah, Kyle, but obviously you don't want to dig yourself too big of a hole here. Lose, dropping three conference games in the Ramsey Center where you've been so tough in recent years. You got to earn it now. You got to go on the road. You got to take it on the way on the road. So the Catamounts have definitely put themselves in a tight spot by dropping games. And like you said, these are these away games aren't exactly easy ones. Catamounts will fall to five and four in conference play. Georgia Southern improves to three and five and they snap their two-game losing streak. And for Georgia Southern, a big win is now they'll go down and play Furman before they return home and play Chattanooga, Appalachian State, and Western Carolina. Nothing will come easy here down the stretch in the Southern Conference. And for the Catamounts, you really have to like their offense of production in the first half. And defensively, even the turnovers, they just weren't able to convert down the stretch today. Yeah, Kyle, it was definitely a tale of two halves here. The Catamounts finding pretty much anything and everything they wanted to offensively in the first half. Really struggled in the second half. But give the Georgia Southern defense credit. You know, they were able to take a lot away from the Catamounts. They, they kept tabs on Trey Sumner with Eric Ferguson and his length really containing Trey Sumner. And then also credit that double team. The double team didn't seem to have too much success for most of the game. But then when it mattered the most in the remaining the last few minutes, of that second half, the double team was able to come up with some big turnovers for the Georgia Southern. Catamounts lose a tough one again at home. Back-to-back -back home losses. They'll look to go on the road next Saturday to do it as they play Appalachian State at 4.30 next Saturday afternoon. For your in-game crew, Philip Jackson, I'm Kyle Rush. Signing off to our post-game show, Caleb Rutherford and Jake Myers will have it on the other side. We'll see you then. And we'll see you for our next home game against Wofford on February the 11th will be the next time Western Carolina will be in Cullowee. Stay tuned for Caleb Rutherford and Jake Myers on the other side. This is Catamount All Access presented by TV62. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Ramsey Center here in Cullowee, North Carolina for the Catamount All Access postgame show presented by TV62. Caleb Rutherford alongside Jake Myers. And Jake, the Catamounts fall to the Georgia Southern Eagles, 72 to 66. Catamounts fall to five and four in Southern Conference play. After they started five and oh, they have lost four straight conference games. The Eagles go to three and five in the Southern Conference, despite having lost their previous two Southern Conference games. And Jake, what happened? Well, they just fell apart. They really did. First halves, they looked like a great team. They were hitting their shots. They're hitting their free throws. Second half, they weren't hitting their free throws. They got to the line 20 times in the game, but only converted on 11 of those attempts. They were 9 of 13 for the first half, which is a respectable number. But they weren't hitting their free throws. And you got to give credit to the Golden, or excuse me, Georgia Southern Eagles. They were really, really attacking Western on all, all phases, defensively, offensively. And Western just couldn't handle it down the stretch. You mentioned the foul shots. The Catamounts were 11 of 20 from the line, one of seven in the second half. And I was telling the video guy for the 
Catamount's team that if I was a coach and my player missed a free throw in a game, I would have a hernia and I would coach for one game. And I'm a big Atlanta Falcons fan, and the Falcons were the least penalized team in the NFL this year. And the reason for that was because any time there was a penalty, after the game was over, they would publicly, well, maybe not publicly, but they would humiliate each other in the video room. Whenever a penalty came up, whoever it was would have to stand up in front of the team, and they would humiliate the heck out of them. And I'm not saying that might, you know, that's the right route for the Catamounts, but when you're shooting 55% from the free throw line, that's unacceptable. Even 75%, in my opinion, is unacceptable. Each of these players should be hitting 9 of 10. Now, that's not realistic, obviously, but at least in practice, they should be hitting 9 of 10 because in a game like this, that is the difference. They missed. Mike Brown had at least three misses. Um, Brandon Boggs had several misses. Brandon Boggs, 4 of 9. Mike Brown, 5 of 8. You know, you just can't have that. That's the difference in this game. And then, you know, they, they played really sloppily in the second half. I was I didn't like what I saw. You know, I don't want to talk too bad because, I mean, some of the players had a good game. I thought Tom Tankowitz had a great game. He did, he did. But when you get into a situation where it comes down to late in the game, I didn't like the situational awareness that the players had. You know, we had a, I believe it was Boggs or Sinclair, one that had a two-pointer with about 10 seconds to go, and we were down by six. Those are the little things that make this team Western Carolina and not Davidson. You're down by six. You need a three, and what does he do? He drives into the lane and shoots a two. That does no good because you're still down two possessions. It's the little things like that that make a difference between a school like Western and a school like Davidson that's winning 18, 20 games a season every year. So for a moment, let's talk about the play of Mike Brown. Now, I thought that... Aside from the missed free throws, he only had seven points, which was one basket, and the five free throws. Jake, just for a second, he's he's a player that I think is going to end up being like Trey when Trey graduates. Tell us a little bit about Mike. Well, Mike Brown, he came out of West Charlotte this year, freshman, mm -hmm. about 6'3", 6'4". He's listed at about 6'4", but he's probably a little bit shorter than that. Smaller guy, he's like a James Sinclair type of body. We saw James come in last year. He didn't really play much under Hunter the first time, uh, the first year, but he developed. And we see this year he's playing starters minutes. He's playing an extended role in the offense. Very good defender. He's just like Mike Brown. Mike Brown is the same exact way. Very, very good defender. And he's He's getting to the free throw line. Now, five of eight isn't the best, but when you only played 14 minutes and you get seven points, that's very respectable. And Mike Brown, as he continues to learn this offense, as he continues to get more chemistry with this team, because remember, none of these players are graduating next year. Mike Brown is going to be one of those very good rotation players that's going to help the Catamounts become better and better as the season goes on. Now, we've talked about consistency. Trey had a very quiet game, 0 of 4 from the three-point line. He only had seven points. He's been averaging almost 20 points a game. Now, Tom Tankowitz on the other end had 20 points, and he hasn't had 20 points in a while, I don't believe. What, what does this team have to do to be consistent? What is it? Is it a practicing thing? Is it a coaching thing? Is it the players just... You know, is it something with the players' mental aspect? I mean, what do you think it is? Well, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, it could be a various different things, but it talks about mid-game adjustments. Mm -hmm. You saw a lot of double teams on Trey right when he crossed half court. Yep. I mean, the guards were picking them up immediately, and then they had one of their bigger forwards come and try to double Trey, and no one was helping him out. Yep. And he got a little flustered, which we don't see Trey do that as much. He's no, very, He's not as careless with the ball. He was a little more careless tonight than he usually is, but you got to give credit to Georgia Southern for that. You really just have to make adjustments. You have to find out what the other team is trying to do, and you have to just beat it somehow. And Western's offense, it's, it's a very good offense. It has its times where it can go a little downhill, but at the same time, any guy can beat you on Western's offense, but it goes through Trey, and that's what Georgia Southern did. They took advantage of that. You just have to adjust to that during the middle of the game. And unfortunately, the Catamounts, in my opinion, don't have anybody that can replace Trey's offensive production. To this point, there are players like Tom and Brandon who can, who can put up 20 points any given night, but it's not a consistent thing. Trey has been one of the more consistent players in the whole conference, for that matter, and he did once again play the entire game, did not sub for one minute, and that's really a testament to how much faith Coach Hunter has in him. And that's going to do it for the Catamount All Access post game show presented by TV62. Once again, your final score Catamounts fall to the Georgia Southern Eagles, 72 to 66. For Kyle Rush and Phil Jackson and Jake Myers, I'm Caleb Rutherford. Thanks for watching.